up is the winner of the Talwa Network, McJanet Prize for 2013, IMU Cares from the International Medical University, Malaysia. Professor Ong Kok Hai, Director for Internet External Affairs, and Dr. James Ko, the senior lecturer, will be presenting more so about the project. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, gives me great pleasure now to introduce in greater detail Dr. James, um, Professor Ong, and Dr. James Ko. Uh, can you? Can we have you up here? Uh, Professor Ong had his tertiary education in Canada. Are you both presenting? and UK under the Colombo Plan and British Council scholarships respectively. He lectured in the medical faculty at the National University of Malaysia. Yes. You're with us, you're from us. Yes. Oh, I see, okay, for two years. And the medical school in USM from 1979 to 1991. Professor Wang Ong was one of the pioneers of, that started the International Medical University in 1992. After his appointment as Dean of Student Affairs in 1998, he led in the development of the IMU CARES program, which went on to win the Talwa Network McJanet Prize in 2013. Well done, and a, a round of applause for both of you for winning the McJanet Prize. Because I know the competition is very keen for the McJanet Prize through the Talwa Network, which is one of our partners. They get applications from all around the world. So we are very proud that someone from Malaysia has won the prize. Great. And Dr. James Koh received his MBBS from the Manipal Academy of Higher Education, India, and his MM, M, 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 MED from UM. Currently, he's senior lecturer in the Department of Medicine at IMU and an infectious disease consultant at the hospital Tunku Jaffa Sramban. And you were the project coordinator of the IMU CARES Kampong Tekir project from 2006 to 2012. So without further ado, gentlemen, please, your presentation. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, a great honor and pleasure to be invited to share with you our work in IMU CARES. Um, the last time I was back in UKM uh, was 22 years ago when I graduated from here. So, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to be back in my uh, alma mater. Yep. Um, well, uh, let me start. Um, I'm going to share with you what we do in IMU CARES uh, Kamong Takir over the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, I, I, Prof. Ong is my boss, so uh, <laughs> I'm the mouthpiece. <laughs> okay. okay, this is uh, this few sentences, uh, you know, uh, captures what is the philosophy of IMU Cares. Uh, we want to create a community of um, scholars and professionals. Uh, we are committed to serving the society, promoting uh, development of our students. We want them to reach their true potential and we want them to be competent, ethical, caring, uh, inquiring citizens, and definitely leaders. So this captures the uh, IMU CARES uh, philosophy. And IMU CARES uh, doesn't just uh, you know, adopt religious. We, we have three core uh, areas of focus. Uh, one is a cause or an issue, uh, something that we advocate. Uh, it could be an organization uh, that we work together with, or uh, it could be a community adoption. Right? And the programs could be long term, at least three years. The Kampong Teke program is already in its sixth year uh, this year, so it's a long term project. Uh, it could be short term, one to three years, or it could be a one off project. Uh, for instance, last year in Seramban, we had a, you know, the, sh the movie, The Hobbit. Uh, so what we did was uh, we worked together with the cinema and uh, we sort of sponsored that, that movie, so we sold tickets at a slightly dearer price, and the proceeds went to a few of the charity uh, groups in, uh, in Seremban, and we managed to uh, gather about 30,000 ringgit. So that was a one-off project, and it was a student-initiated project. Um, there are flagship projects in, uh, under IMU CARES, and uh, the first one is the Kampong Angkat projects, and we have uh, adopted villages in different states where IMU campus, uh, campuses are, uh, namely in uh, KL, 
uh, Seremban and uh, Batu Pahat. Batu Pahat is at the s uh, south of this country for those who are uh, not from Malaysia. Um, we also have the IMU Goes Green project where we recycle, uh, uh, we print on two sides of the paper, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we try not to use paper during meetings, so we try to cut down on uh, carbon footprint uh, in, in, in the campus. Um, we work together with organizations like, such as the NASAM and in the Sri Ratana project. What I'm going to talk to you about is mainly um, one of the project that, uh, a flagship project under IMU CARES, which is the IMU CARES Kampong Tekir. And we have three focuses in, 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 in this, in this uh, objectives in this uh, project. Uh, to the villagers, we want to pro uh, provide to them long-term, continued rural, primary rural uh, health care uh, for them. Uh, to the students, we want them to develop, uh, because IMU has got a unique, uh, uh, it's an outcome-based curriculum, where at the end of the uh, five-year medical or nursing or other programs, they should have eight qualities, right, uh, which we feel uh, should be in every healthcare professional. So we want students to develop in that area. And for the staff and uh, uh, perhaps students, we want them to engage in research uh, through this project. So I'm not sure whether how clear is that, but uh, that shows uh, eight uh, desires uh, that we want to see or qualities we see in our graduates. Now the process of uh, starting a project, uh, we go through these five stages. Uh, in every project that under IMU CARES, these five stages are there. First, we have to do some fact-finding. We have to know uh, who are we dealing with. And then we have to identify their needs. Right? And then we engage uh, the stakeholders. We formulate a plan and tell them uh, what are, uh, ask them what are their needs. And they tell us. And we will tell them how we can fulfill these needs. Right? Um, and then, of course, in every uh, project we do, we aim to uh, document. We need to uh, have uh, identify and uh, you know document all the measures and outcomes. And finally, accountability. You know, we have to show that we have done some stuff. We have to uh, report. We have to write reports, and we have to publish. So fact finding. Uh, what we did back in two thousand six was. Uh, to look for a good village. Uh, and it was quite a while, and Prof Ong was with us, and we went from uh, village to village. I remember we went to a fishing village uh, somewhere in Port Dixon. And finally, we decided to adopt an Orang Asli village. And so uh, the fact-finding team went in, we surveyed the area. Uh, we wanted to find out what are the facilities there, what's the water supply like, what the electricity supply like, how's the education level, and stuff like that. And we, we try to uh, identify who are the leaders in the village, uh, who are the uh, relevant stakeholders in the village as well, and we try to engage them. And back in 2000, this, this whole process took about six months, um, from December 2006 in, until June 2007 when we finally launched the program. And we identified a village uh, relatively near to the campus in Suramban, about 10 miles away. Uh, but uh, it's quite unique in the sense that it uh, falls right. Uh, you know, this village, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see this, but it's actually Google Map um, from the satellite. And uh, if you can see some red lines here, uh, this picture was captured in our last outing uh, when most of us now have smartphones. Uh, six years ago, we don't have smartphones. So this red line is actually represent one of the mobile group that went out uh, from the base. And uh, one of the students uses his smartphone and captured the GPS uh, tracking because uh, we have no idea which house is which. Uh, it's not, uh, most of the houses don't have numbers and you know, they don't have names. So we, we need to capture it somehow. And this is captured by one of our students. And this is where we, they, they, they uh, visited on that day. And you can see that the village is really huge and it's smack right in the middle of a palm oil estate. So we need to go through an estate to reach the village. So uh, in 2006, the population was uh, about 500, out of which 50% uh, were children. And uh, most of the adults were either in the agriculture sector or uh, in the estates, or they're working in factories. Um, the education level was relatively low. Most of them were up to only uh, primary five. Um, 
a lot of adults uh, drop out from school. And there were two kindergartens there uh, and one community hall. Um, the religion uh, of the people there, 90% of them were Catholics. Uh, the rest were Muslims or uh, still holding on to their traditional beliefs. Um, the nearest healthcare clinic was uh, around 10 kilometers away. Um, and um, at that time, uh, the water is directly from the river, uh, which is uh, up in the mountain. So they assure that it's uh, quite clean. So we, we trust them. So far, no leptospirosis. Uh, and uh, uh, the electricity was very uh, you know, irregular. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And uh, the road to the village has to be through a gravel road. We didn't have a tar road at that time. And to, in order to get in, we have to ask the estate people, uh, estate manager, to uh, transport us in. So what they did was uh, they converted a tractor into a sort of a makeshift bus. You know, the tractor uh, uh, drags a wagon, and all the students and staff pile into the wagon or onto the tractor. It was quite fun, actually. And uh, ride in is about three kilometers in. Right. But nowadays, uh, we all drive in because it's a nice road in now. Okay. The stakeholders that we identified were, uh, you know, JKKK. Uh, in Malay, it means, uh, uh, I always have problems with these words. Jawatan uh, Kwasa, Kemajuan dan Keselamatan Kampung. It's actually a committee formed by uh, the village uh, leaders uh, to look after the welfare and safety of the village. Of course, we engaged the Ministry of Health and also the Ministry in charge of Orang Asli. Uh, Orang Asli is uh, the, the best word to translate would be uh, ob aborigines, um, probably. That's, yeah, that's the best word to translate that. Uh, we identified several needs. Um, they have limited access to health care. Uh, health awareness was quite low. Uh, dental hygiene was pretty bad at the time. Uh, there were quite a number of teenage pregnancies, uh, single mothers. Um, alcohol abuse was rampant, and uh, there was smoking, uh, a smoking problem. Uh, a lot of youths uh, engaged in glue sniffing, and the education level was quite low. And we had many challenges. Uh, one of the biggest challenges was uh, we actually don't know how many people are there in the village. Uh, even the, the, the department in charge of them have no idea how many are there because a lot of the births uh, are not registered. So we don't actually know, but we estimate there'll be about 500. Um, the exact location of houses were poorly uh, uh, defined uh, because, uh, there, like I said, there's no number. The houses are not built uh, you know, in rows and all that. They're built everywhere. Uh, some of the uh, uh, houses are in the mountains, so we're not sure where exactly are the houses and who stays where. Um, there's no uh, baseline healthcare in these indices. Um, initially, the fir first, first year or so, they were very uh, wary of us. They were very scared of us because uh, IMU uh, is, a, is an English-sounding uh, university, totally foreign to them. And uh, there were a few times where they thought we were a religious group. So it was a very difficult period uh, in order to gain their trust. So that was uh, one of our major challenges. So we want to establish rapport and trust and uh, we found that the male population were uh, even more varied, uh, and they, they are not uh, too keen to be, uh, you know, to be given health education or screen uh, health-wise. So it was a, a, a another challenge that we had. And there were no uh, little or no uh, identity um, documentation. So a lot of them don't have identity cards, um, no birth certs. Uh, only single name, so uh, we don't know uh, who is whose daughter and who is whose son, and uh, no, we, we, they don't have uh, address, they don't have uh, phone number, so it's very difficult to keep track of these uh, villages. We engage the stakeholders, um, there are three stakeholders I told you just now. Um, for the village, we uh, establish contact with them, we ask them what are their needs, and we uh, presented a proposal to them on how we can fulfill some, if not all, some of these needs. We also engaged the department for the welfare of the Aboriginal people, and we asked for permission and infrastructure support, in the sense that when we hold gatherings, uh, they could provide us with, say, tents, tables, chairs, and they're very present, so it's very good. Um, 
Of course, we also engaged uh, the Ministry of Health and they have been very, very supportive. They provided us with uh, personnel, equipment, medications, uh, and they allow us to um, directly ref refer from the village to the hospital or to the clinics, um, and also uh, laboratory supports. Then we formulated an action plan. What do we do with these villages? Since we are a medical university, so we focused on uh, providing healthcare and uh, education, healthcare screening and education. For the adult, pop adult population, we screen them uh, using all these indices. And in 2009, we launched a program uh, specifically targeting at children below 12. And we wanted to see uh, how is their growth and uh, their nutritional status. By this time, uh, other, de other departments in the university have joined in. So it's, it's become an interdisciplinary program. We started to engage other departments, and the Department of Nutrition joined in at that time. Um, we also provide health education and awareness, and we intervene whenever there's minor ailments. We could treat there, um, but major ailments we refer to the nearest hospital. And because most of us work in the hospitals anyway, so it's quite easy. And um, we also provided free uh, spectacles uh, and uh, dental care, on-site dental care. When the dental fac uh, faculty was established, they began to be involved in this as well. So. Uh, it, it grew from there and you know from other from a small group of medical people became nursing and then nutrition and then dental from plan to action manpower we used students staff uh, stakeholders physical we had permission from the village to establish a base there so they gave us a place to keep our equipment uh, vandalized a few times but it's okay we managed to replace that and then when they finally you know we gained their trust so they also took care of our equipment so that's all right and um, of course finance uh, what we did uh, was uh, we engaged uh, the public through some uh, charity events you know uh, fundraising events uh, and from this the money is channeled to various IMU cares program uh, we also engage pharmaceutical companies we do not publicize for them but uh, we request aid from them in the terms of, uh, uh, not money, but in terms of products like dental toothpaste, you know, toothbrushes, uh, maybe some vitamin syrups, stuff like that. And private enterprises, uh, usually they will uh, sponsor us in terms of gifts for maybe the children, uh, balloons, you know, uh, maybe hampers for competitions and things like that. And then we engaged the community. What we did for the first year was, when we launched this program, we had a very huge uh, carnival-like you know, uh, event where we had uh, a lot of games, a lot of singing. Uh, the villagers here love singing, so we had to join them in singing. So, you know, uh, and uh, we had uh, games, uh, sports games, to engage the younger uh, population. And they're really good because we always lose very badly to them. Uh, and we had Gotong Royong. Uh, surprisingly, uh, they really take care of the village. It's not very dirty. Uh, rubbish are uh, burnt. They, they, they are not collected. They are burnt. Uh, so this is quite all right, except that uh, before and after an event, we will have a Gotong Royong so that everything is cleared up. And this is a good way to engage the community as well. Um, we found that um, when we have events only at the base, uh, not many people turn up. So what we did was we split uh, the students and staff into mobile groups. And maybe five or six students with one or two staff. And we carry a bag, carry a weighing machine, uh, and uh, we walked to their houses from house to house. And, and we found that to be very effective. Um, we also shifted the events from morning to later in the afternoon so that the women folk would have come back from the market and the men uh, hopefully uh, would have come back from whatever they were doing in the morning uh, they were either uh, in the talking after their their, their plants uh, or they're back from the factory and of course we reward them um, every year we reward the oldest healthiest village uh, villager men and women uh, old, uh, healthiest child, so we, we sort of 
give them an incentive so that they will be uh, willing to take care of their health, right? uh, take charge of their own health. These are some photographs of uh, how we engage the community there. Um, various, uh, various ways uh, or various things that we do in uh, health screening, health education, um, screening of the uh, a pediatric population. Identifying and measuring the outcomes. Um, for students and staff, the program, the IMU CAS program, was incorporated into the curriculum. Uh, in Saramban, in phase two, every student has to be engaged with the community at least once during their, their uh, time with us. They only, they only spend about two and a half years with us in Saramban. And during that time, they have to engage with the community at least once. And this will be documented into their logbook. And the logbook is used for assessment. Um, they also have to write a reflective uh, report right, uh, to um, document how they feel about being involved in this uh, uh, project. We also uh, gather research data from them, uh, how, uh, uh, post event, uh, what was the impact on the program of the, of the project on uh, their own uh, personal development. For the staff, uh, KPI is, you know, you don't know what is KPI? Uh, KPI means money. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so, so for the staff, um, the project, IMU CAS project, is one of the core KPI of IMU. That means every staff has to be involved in community service. And this year's KPI is three projects, so it's really, really, you know, quite a lot. Uh, but it's good because we see people who used to be uh, uninvolved has become uh, really involved because of the KPI. And I think that's a very good, good thing to do. For the community, we managed to establish a baseline demographic data. I can uh, confidently tell you that 30% uh, uh, of them are obese, unfortunately. Uh, but um, wonderfully, only 2% are diabetics. So that's pretty good. Um, and only about 10% uh, have high blood pressure. So in this uh, community, obesity is a huge problem, but the rest, not so much. Um, and with this data, we can um, use it for interventional strategies. We feed back to the communi uh, community leaders so that they can take action. We tell them which are the villagers who have health problems, uh, so they will take action, um, either by uh, providing transport to the nearest clinic or to look into their welfare. And Improvement in the village infrastructure, the, you, you can't recognize the village now compared to six years ago because of uh, us going in so, rap so frequently. And we, you know, we don't claim all credit for this, but I think it has an impact because of, uh, because of us going in regularly. The, real, uh, the estate has decided to pave the road. So we now have a nice gravel road into the village. Um, and uh, from the um, Department of uh, Welfare of the Aborigines, they've been very, very supportive. And in every, every event, they have been sending representatives to look after, you know, to, to look at the welfare of the people. We had many, many uh, VIPs coming in uh, during large events. And this is good because it allows the, the village uh, leaders to communicate with the uh, VIP what are their needs. And in the last, uh, last year, I remember sitting in a meeting with them and uh, the, the MP of the area was there in the, in, in the, in the event and um, the village head told him, uh, Sir, we really need treated water. Okay. Now, uh, sadly, we still don't have treated water, but he says we need treated water. And uh, so it was, it's a good way to engage or become a middleman, sort of, to let these people, uh, uh, you know, communicate. This is one of the research we have done, and we hope to publish it soon, um, on a student's um, uh, impact of the project on a student based on the eight IMU outcomes. And this research shows that out of the eight outcomes, uh, six outcomes were achieved through this project. Accountability. So we constantly look at the challenges and reanalyze how we can overcome them. And 
we look at our achievements um, and then we see how we can uh, progress from there. We track the working budget. Budget is always a problem everywhere. So we try to get the most from what we have, our resources. And we, of course, write periodic reports, submission, written back by photographic evidence. So almost all events, we have uh, one photographer there in, in, to, to capture everything, you know, like evidence. We have done this. And so the roles of the IMU staff and students are, 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 are these. The project coordinator, uh, Profong is the boss up there. Huh? So he's the project coordinator of everything, and he takes care of all this. And in the school or various uh, medical schools that we have or campuses, these are the uh, roles of the staff. Huh? Uh, I was the program coordinator until early this year. Uh, it's taken over by a younger, more dynamic person. So I, I'm quite enthusiastic about that. So yeah, uh, supervision, teaching of students, we coordinate the various activities and it's of course part of the KPI. For students, uh, there are a whole lot of benefits that they will get, uh, the roles of, of being involved in this. Huh? There's uh, interprofessional learning, uh, it becomes part of their curriculum, they develop leadership uh, you know, skills. Um, I forgot to mention that all these events are uh, student-initiated. Right? Um, they are planned by the students, they are carried out by the students, the budgeting is done by the students, uh, so what do we do? Actually, staff, we facilitate the, the event. So everything is done by the student, uh, led by students, and in every event, uh, there will be a mixture of uh, veterans, or veteran students leading the newbie students. So young students will always be supervised by somebody who has been to a program once. So there's sort of cascading uh, 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 you know, knowledge and also um, uh, leadership skill development. So uh, we won this year's prize. It was actually quite unexpected. Uh, I got the SMS, no, I got the email from, uh, from them uh, on a Friday afternoon, evening, and um, I was alone in Fraser's Hill and uh, I didn't know how to, who to share it with. So uh, I was overjoyed. I text uh, Prof Ong and I emailed Prof Ong and I emailed Prof Victor. So um, it was really an honor actually uh, to win this. So what have we established or achieved over the past six years? Uh, we have a database now. Um, we have managed to incorporate various departments into one project. Um, we have established close working relationship with the stakeholders. There are research opportunities. And last year, we, we were awarded the Excellence in Community Service by IMU itself, and this year, the uh, McJanet Prize. For the villagers, um, what are the benefits for them? Now they have almost direct access to healthcare. Um, major ailments are directly referred to the relevant specialty. Most of us are specialists in the hospital, so it's, it facilitates the way. Um, minor ailments are treated. We raise the health awareness. Uh, free glasses uh, are, uh, are, are given to these villages. Uh, this is through um, collaboration with um, shops in town that sell glasses. So what we do is we send a car in or went in, pick up the villagers that we detected that have visual problems. Uh, we bring them to the shop and uh, the shop has agreed to give the glasses uh, to us at a very much reduced price. And uh, we didn't want to give the, the villagers totally free because we want them to learn a sense of independence, uh, not just uh, taking, taking, taking. So what we did was we asked from each villagers 10 ringgit, maybe to cover the petrol. Yeah. Uh, but the glasses are given to them. So in, the, in a way, it becomes two-way. We hope that you know, it will encourage us a sense of you know, uh, responsibility uh, and, 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 and uh, independence. Um, better infrastructure, like I mentioned earlier. So what do we do with the money? That's a lot of people ask us, you know. Uh, buy an Apple MacBook, you know, uh, things like that. So when we first won, uh, a lot of colleagues came and asked me, what are you going to do with the money, you know? Uh, what are you going to... Um, 7,500 US dollars, uh, which comes to about 20 odd. Uh, so 
we have decided to use the money to be channeled to various IMU programs based on a need basis. Uh, so propose, uh, an email was sent out to ask for proposal and budgeting from each IMU care project coordinators. So you sort of know, uh, we can then we can distribute the money. Um, we're hoping that Turkey will get more money. Okay, so uh, over the next uh, three to five years, we are hoping now with information technology, we hope to map this village properly. Uh, in fact, in July, uh, next, next month, we are hoping to send in many teams with uh, GPS-enabled smartphones and map out the village properly so we know which houses are where. And after that, uh, we want to zone the villages so that then we can make student groups adopt each zone so that they could uh, you know, care specifically for that zone. Because we, we realize that the, it's really huge, the area. So it's probably uh, one step forward in getting better access to them. Uh, we also want to do uh, an I, uh, using computerized uh, you know, registry. Uh, we have tried all kinds of ways. We, we tried giving them cards and books and everything, and they come and say, what book, what card, you know? So, uh, we're trying to hopefully, uh, you know, get a computerized registry. Um, in the education-wise, we will continue to help uh, develop the students, and this time we want to also use computer uh, competency-based uh, 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 a way of uh, uh, assessing the students. And of course, in research, uh, these are the areas that we will look into. So, in a, to conclude. Uh, we find that this uh, IMU CARES program is uh, very effective for direct involvement of staff, students, and even the alumni in community service. We do have alumni coming back and helping us. And it's opportunity for interprofessional learning, teamwork, practice of medicine outside classroom and hospital, and it's an excellent platform uh, to achieve IMU's vision. Thank you for your time.